and set transparent color. Okay, so you get the idea. It becomes transparent, the gold comes through, but it's only that one tone, okay? All right, great. Anything else before I move on to Excel? Okay. Being a swell audience, anything about Word that popped into your head? Okay, and did you learn something about PowerPoint? Good, excellent. Okay, so now on to Excel. And I have one file <laughs> with lots of worksheets, okay? I downloaded this from the web, so I'm going to enable content. Okay. You're going to see that a lot, and that's okay. There were some links in there that I move pages around. It doesn't matter. So I'm going to start at the beginning, okay? Because we had learners of all levels. I had people saying, just teach me something I don't know. So I'm going to come in here, make it a little bigger. Um, and you probably know that if I wanted to add um, the number of patients seen by Dr. Smith last year and this year, we would just come up to auto sum, hit enter, and there you go, right? If you didn't know that, that's how you do it, right? Uh, let's say, though, your boss calls and says, I'd like to know what Dr. Smith was did last year and Professor Plum. Just those two. So if I hold down my control key, I get those two fields alone and look down at the bottom. Okay, can you see that? It's very small, but it shows me the average number of patients, the count is two, and the sum is 215. Okay. So if I get somebody doing a quick phone call asking me like crazy things, uh, yeah, and Dr. Lamb this year, sure, 295. Uh, and, oh, what, not Professor Plum? Okay, let me let me start that over again. Now I have to do a whole new formula. You know, I'm a busy girl. Okay, all right, so this is what you want. It's 332, okay? All right, really easy. You don't have to be doing a lot of gyrations. Yes? The control key. If you're using a Mac, it's command, okay? But the control key is our friend. But let's say we want to do quick summarizing of these totals. If I just swipe like this, notice I go out one column and down one row. You know this trick, don't you? Okay, you click auto sum and there you go. You have it in all directions at once. Okay. All right. I'm going to undo that just for a second. Okay. Um, I'm not going to worry about averaging, but I do want to... Um, explain about count well yeah we'll do averaging too so here's I'm going to to average okay that's from the auto sum right here I'm going to average these values so how do you calculate an average great okay so you have to know how to do the math okay so you do that's great you, you total the sum and divide by the number in the set exactly okay um, the wonderful thing about Excel is that once you get the formula right the first time, so we have average, sorry, I can't make that any bigger, B4 through B7, we can just use this autofill handle, drag it next door, and it runs the calculation for column C. Perfect. Okay. Um, let's do count. Okay. So count, it's amazing how many times certain people in certain groups want count. They don't want some, they want to count the number of values, okay? So we understand the difference why that's three and why that's four, right? Because that's that's the number of values. So some people have a real problem with blank spaces. They want every cell filled. Yes. And they will tell you, put in a zero. Well, now it is part of those calculations. So if you are doing averaging or counting, unless you really want a zero, don't put it. If Mrs. Dapper was not in our group last year, we shouldn't be giving her a zero because we didn't count her effectiveness or her contribution. Okay? So I know I don't like blank spaces either. It feels incomplete. But if they need to be blank, they're blank. Okay? Uh, let's see. I think. Oops. In the wrong place. Let's see. If you really want, you can put NA. Okay. 
um, because if you put a minus sign, hmm, hmm, you see it's not counting those because they're not numbers. Okay, so if you really want to put something, you can just don't put zero, please. Okay, um, let's take this to the next step. Let's talk about next year. Okay, so next year we're going to talk about growth. Okay. Our clinic is slated to grow. That's a good thing. Right? But we need to see what's going on, kind of how much can we grow, what would those numbers look like. So how do we start a formula in Excel? What symbol do you use? Equal sign. Equal sign. Okay, so every formula has to start with an equal sign. Um, so I heard your voice loud and clear. Can you reason out for me how we would determine an increase uh, in the percent for next year? How would we, how would we reason that out? What would the formula look like okay that's fine um, no that's all right um, in I one I'm gonna put the growth percent and yes I know I'm going really fast it's being recorded it's I forgot to say my opening line welcome to the Microsoft iceberg okay we are not even gonna touch the tip of the iceberg you only get to lick it today okay <laughs> So I forgot my opening line. It was so good. Um, all right. What's a good growth percent? Let's not say 10 because that's too easy. Hmm? Seven. Seven? Okay, we'll start with seven. That's fine. And the reason I'm pointing it out here, I will explain in a little bit. Okay. So to show a 7% increase, uh, by the way, last year doesn't matter right now, so I'm going to hide it so that I don't think about it. Okay? So... If I take this year's number and I multiply it by that growth percent, right? What do I have to do to get the, the total number? Oh, wait, I'll show it to you wrong because that's just easier. Um, by the way, this is a whole number, right? If I change this in the number group to percent, oh, 700%, oh, that's bad, okay? So go ahead and change the field with your percent to the percentage and now it's going to calculate as what? Right? 0.07. Okay? So I like to see the percent. That's just me. Okay? Uh, just make sure that your number is calculating right or you're, you're going to notice a difference. A really big difference. Yes. Okay? So I'm going to say equal. And I'm going to say 120. Uh, to multiply star. the... Yep. Yeah, it's the star. Okay? Or shift 8. The operators, I love it when you have a regular keyboard, you know, when you have the regular keyboard, all the operators you need are over here on the right-hand side. It's lovely. Okay, so stars multiply, slashes divide. There's a giant plus sign and then a minus sign. I don't understand why that giant plus key, when we need an equal, we need an equal over there to start all of our formulas. Why don't they put an equal? Okay, somebody help me protest on the design of the keyboard. Um. So we're going to multiply the 120 times 7%. Okay, so if I hit enter now, oh, we go down a lot because that's only calculating the increase, right? Now we see the fatal flaw. So we'll just come back up here and we'll edit. Okay, we'll edit this formula to add back in what? The original value. Okay, and hit enter. Yay, terrific. Okay, so um, this, this little autofill that you seem to know about, it's great, right? So if I were to double click, that copies it down. That's wonderful, right? No. Why is that not wonderful? Terrific. Well, I want to double click, and this opens up and shows us what fields it's drawing from. So you can see that because it's a relative, formulas are relative, okay? As I move the formula down, it's looking for 7% in a different location. So I want to make an absolute reference, okay? An absolute reference means it doesn't move. It doesn't shift. So I'm going to highlight I1. I feel like Battleship, right? Okay, and the quick way to do that is F4, right? The F4 key, and it's not doing it for me. Come on. 
it won't do it for me right now. Oh, you know what? I think it might have something to do with my microphone being in because that's the same key that I have for a microphone on here. That's okay. We can type it. So a dollar sign in front of a reference location makes it absolute. You do not have to have the entire cell absolute, which means it could move along a row, but just not shift the columns, or it could move along the columns and not shift the row. We want it to always go to I1. So I hit enter, and now if I double click, it keeps that reference. Okay. Good. I like to deal with whole people when we're talking about patients. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and just select all this text and I'm going to come to my number group. Okay, and I'm just going to decrease the decimal. I'm sorry. Yes, decrease the decimal. Okay, and now we have whole people. Now, the good thing about this and something to be aware of is that when Excel runs calculations based on these values, it's looking at the true calculation, not the rounded one. So when you get to the end of your summary, you might say, this is off by one. Why is this off now? Okay, And that's because it is just showing you the rounded value, but calculating on the true value. Okay. Um, oh, so we do this because this way we can give this spreadsheet to a manager and they can say, well, what if we did 12%? Uh, what if we did, you know... 6.5 percent okay oh look 6.5 looks like it's rounding right so we want to make sure that we increase the decimals here based on what our supervisor might want right because they might not know how to change that and they might think that you've given them a faulty spreadsheet but now they don't have to change the formulas they can just play with the scenarios okay great um any questions about that you got really quiet. Are you all, are you having a good time still? Okay, you were making a lot more happy noises when we were doing the easy stuff. Okay, um, I'm going to take away the fill here and change the text so you can see it. So if um, your place is like my place, it's really not fair, right? When Dr. Smith was already doing the lion's share and we're saying we're going to up it, Seven point, you know, you all do that. Look, you're all in this room because you're giving up your lunch time because you give more than, you know, is required, right? So this isn't fair. We don't want to up Dr. Smith if he's already at capacity. So that's an if function, okay? So now this is the tricky part. It looks really hard, okay? It's not hard. It's a logical function. And once we say that logical function starts, the glaze starts coming, and you're just not sure anymore, okay? So I'm going to piecemeal through this because there were some people that were saying, I really want to do more. I want more functions, okay? So if I come up here, I'm going to equal and if, okay? So it's a logical test. Anybody use these breadcrumbs? I, I, I hate them myself. These are way too hard for me to deal with. I come up here to the FX. This shows me the old-fashioned window that steps me through it. So my logical test, okay? Oh, by the way, I'm going to hide. Oops, wait. Look, let me get out of this. Sorry. Just to get you focused on what we're doing, I'm hiding next because we're thinking about this year's stuff, okay? Um, so I'll just put new next because I can it's my spreadsheet. It doesn't have to make sense. Okay, so I'm going to choose if, open it up. The logical test is if this year's, okay, was more, and I always get my alligator mouse backwards. So if I get this the wrong way, we'll switch it. Okay, so if C4 is more than 100, then I want to return the same value. If it's false, which means it's less than 100, I want that calculation that we just came up with, right? That we can talk through again. 120 times the gross percent, right? And we want to make that an absolute value. Plus, 
plus the original value. Still scary, I know, but hopefully it made sense. So we got 120. And now if we copy that down, eh, it won't go down. Oh yeah, it won't go down because there's a blank column here. It won't autofill, but I can still drag it. Okay. All right. So we see that Professor Plum had 102 people. That was the threshold, so he doesn't get more. Everybody else gets a percentage increase. And we can turn this into whole people, right? Oop, oh, wrong way. And if we go back and said, oh, we made a mistake in our records, right? We love this because it changes. He only had 97, so now you're going to have 104. Okay, so always go back and test your formulas to make sure that they're doing what you think. Okay. Good? Okay. Doesn't the formula say it's been... Okay. Our threshold was 100. Right. So if they have seen more than 100 patients, they don't have to see, they don't have to see any more. If they have less than 100... Well, you know, Dr. Smith is still seeing 120. <laughs> well, no. What we said was the threshold to have more patients added to your workload. You can set other limits. This is just one example. But it's something that I think that we kind of run across a lot of times. Um, you know, if you take so much sick time in this month, then you can't get any sick time next month, you know, or there are different different scenarios. But think when you say if. If you do this, then this happens. It's a logical thing. Okay. So let's go on with another formula, VLOOKUPS. Who likes VLOOKUPS? Yay! How do you use your VLOOKUP? Good. Three people raised their hand. I'm waiting for anybody to talk. When you're comparing spreadsheets, okay. So you, you're pulling like data from one spreadsheet to another, okay. Oh, I'm getting there. Yes. I would be happy to. <laughs> and this is why we're in this mixed room. So V means vertical, and look up means like check this table over here and return something, return a value, okay? So what gets me, the most common one, is every customer service person that you talk to when you're setting up an account, they ask for your state, your city, and your zip code. They should ask your zip code and give you back in a nice manner your city and say, see, you're like, mm -hmm, right, okay? So this is going to be our lookup table. These are our lookup values. The trick about VLOOKUP is whatever you're looking up has to be in the first column of that data. Okay. Now what I want you to understand is it does not have to be the first column of the spreadsheet. I can add new columns here. It doesn't matter. Okay. But I'm going to make this a range. How many people use ranges? Okay. Ranges are nice. It's the way you can select a selection of cells and give it a name so you can reference that in a formula. So, um, what's your name? What's your name? Uh, who? Lauren. Lauren. Okay, because she answered first. I was saying you, but you didn't answer. Okay, so this is called Lauren from now and forever. Lauren. So I can go anywhere in this workbook and I can come here and I can go to Lauren. Okay, I could be on anywhere, any sheet in this workbook. Hello, Lauren. Okay, and I can refer to that range. Okay. There's nothing in Lauren right now, but that's okay. Okay. So uh, that's how easy it is to make a range. It really is that the, the trick about ranges, okay, can't have any spaces. When you want to refer to them in a formula, it's case sensitive. So I like to use all lowercase. I use the capital L because Lauren's a real person, okay? But lowercase, um, and hit enter after you type the name in the name box. If you don't hit enter, it doesn't stick, and you get really frustrated. So I don't have anything here for the zip code. So I'm going to just highlight this, and I'm going to call it zips. 
enter. That's what makes it. Okay? So now I can refer to this on any other worksheet. So I'll just bring up another worksheet. Okay? And I'm going to say that this is going to be, hello, this is my color column, okay? This is the zip code that the, the client's going to give me. Oh, I'm so sorry. Can't you tell me when you can't see that? Tell me when you want me to zoom in, okay? Because I can't. It's fine for me. Okay? Um, so this will be the city, and this will be the state. Oh, state. Now, these are all Delaware, so, like, that's, like, totally cheating, but whatever. Um, I could do county. That could be interesting. Because that's what our thing has okay so this is where the criteria that we're going to compare to our data will go so here's where our first VLOOKUP goes we say equal we start VL for VLOOKUP oops I clicked out of it um, you can also do horizontal lookup that's just arranging the data in rows instead of columns I'm going to open my FX again because it's my friend I have a picture of this. If you do download this uh, worksheet called VLOOKUP Zips, there's a picture of this window explaining what everything is. So what's our lookup value? What are we comparing? What are, where are we going to enter the variable data? Where are we going to enter the customer's zip code? Column A. Column A. Okay, so an A2. The table array, that's our database thingy, right? So if we know the name of it, we can type it. And if we see that little icon with the dot, 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 it means, yay, we were right. If we don't remember it, okay, you can go searching for it. You can use this window here, and I could say it's this. Okay? Yep, let me get rid of that one. I can say it's this section here. Okay. Because I have a name range, it knows what it's called. Let's say I want it to not... Do that named range thing okay I want to do specific cells I can do that okay. and you can see that's probably what you normally see in formulas which is like some strange reference that blah, 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 doesn't make any sense right that's why we call it something to make sense the column index number that means within this little lookup data what do you want to return so what column number would the city be in if zip code is one, two, okay? And now the lookup logical thing, okay? This is important. If it's omitted or you put true, it gets a rounding match. Okay, it's the closest one. Well, there are a lot of zip codes in Delaware that start with one nine. So it's just going to hit the first one in the list. So we're going to put false. And it explains that down here in that logical lookup, but it's in like some weird Excel person talking. Okay? So false means exactly. True means close enough. We click OK. Oh. And it says NA. Hmm. Why does it say NA? Because I don't have a zip code. So what's the zip code for this building? Okay, so it's Newcastle, okay, and if I were to copy this down, you know, whatever, we put other ones, got it, okay, now, we can copy <coughs> this next door, okay, but VLOOKUP doesn't stay uh, in the same relationship, okay, necessarily, so I'm going to, I copied it next door so I don't have to start from scratch. Okay. But notice it's looking at B2. Oh no, I don't want it to be B2. I want it to be A2. Okay. And this time it's column index 3 because that's where the county is. I think. Oh, maybe that one didn't have a county. Hmm. Let's see. <coughs> A2. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Column index three. Well, see, let's go take a look. County. Looks like it would be right. Ah, thank you. I didn't make it absolute, but I changed the, the oh, because, yeah, because, because I didn't use the range. This is the other reason to use the range. 
okay, it shifted that range as well. If I made it zips, it always zips, and then it'll work. Okay, so I don't have a zip code, that's why I'm not getting it. So thank you for mentioning that that shifted as well. Again, those ranges, okay, you want to master Excel, that's a great shortcut, just using ranges. Good. So just real quickly, I'm going to go over this, um, the grades. This is VLOOKUP the other way, where uh, rather than it being an exact match, okay, we're looking at a close match. So I told you I work in education. So here's the true score calculated based on this grade scale. This instructor likes to curve and give everybody five points and then see if the grade changes. So the great cheater method, because I'm running out of time, is pasting. Okay? And it has shifted over to look at this value. Everything's good. Okay? And I can copy this down. Oops. Come on. Okay? So it copies down. You'll see very rarely does it make a difference here. It was an A minus to an A. But the faculty really want to know that they're being fair, and I think that's wonderful, and they can, you know, show everything. What we can also do is this is where count comes in handy. We can see the count, how many Fs, how many Ds, okay? And this is within a range of points. So um, if you're using that kind of rounding feature, you want to start from the lowest value to the highest value. If you go the other way, it rounds the other way. So it'll round down instead of up, if that makes sense. If it doesn't make sense, the first time you do it the other way, you're going to be like, this isn't right. Just resort it or come back to this worksheet and you'll be like, right, I need to show it at the low value. Okay. So um, I'm going to just get rid of this column here. And I'm going to choose these two columns right here. And I'm going to insert a chart. Okay. Uh, and we can make it, we'll make it a pie. Everybody likes pie. Everybody likes pie, okay? But very quickly, you can see the values, how you're doing. Um, what faculty often like, um, if we wanted to change the chart type, is that line. They want to see if they've got a bell curve, okay? And we can see that in this, if I click OK, in this instance, we don't really have a true bell. Okay? But that's because no one got a B minus. Okay? So we might want to think about why that big gap between C plus and B. Okay? So that's a really nice way to do that. Um, and that's it. Good? Yes. Okay. Uh, we'll come back to protect formulas uh, at the end. I'm going to just move this by so I don't forget it. By the way, you know you can make as many sheets as you want. Each sheet has over a million rows and 65,000 columns, we tend to use the size of the postage stamp for or your return address on an envelope. You know, that's all we use. And then we, like, start a new worksheet or a new workbook. I'm not saying that's wrong. I'm just saying you don't have to. We don't have the blue screen of death that we used to have. Um, and the files automatically back themselves up. They're meant to hold a lot of data. Um, so it's very easy. I just add it, click that little plus sign, got another sheet, okay? And we'll just call this sheet Sandy because I'm very self-centered. Okay. You hit enter and there you go. And now you have this sheet that you can then country line dance anywhere in the list that you want. That's grapevining if you're not a country line dancer. That's kind of the grapevine, okay? Good. So um, when you're working on fiscal year things, Okay, let's, let's just think about that. This grading thing, you know, will have different grades, but it always, you want to keep the same formulas and everything. If you right-click on the tab, you can move or copy it. It's weird, because if you just um, will choose grades, it doesn't remember that you're on that one. You have to choose the one that you want. You can copy it within the same work, workbook, another workbook, any workbook that's open, or a brand new one. Okay. But you have to remember, create a copy. If you don't create a copy, it just moves it. Okay? You've done that, right? You've done. Isn't that annoying? When it just moves it, and you're like, well, okay. You know, now you have to go and figure out where it went. But there you go. There's your copy. Okay? Hmm? What? 
I click that undo button anytime something unexpected happens. Undo okay. is our friend. Oh, yeah. Here's the quick access tool toolbar in um, Excel. I pretty much always have print preview as my friend on the quick access toolbar in Excel, right? We never want to just hit print. <laughs> always print preview and adjust and adjust and that's a whole class in itself you know but it's worth it okay so basic charts I'm thinking this is for many of you here this is when you're gonna like really try not to nod off I see we're already it's a warm room I'm sorry and I can't get you all up and stretching you could why don't you yes let's all stand up go ahead come on I'm up here dancing come on just stand up and stretch for a minute okay so people were asking just for something new, um, but this is something old and classic, okay? Yay! You can even do like a little ducktails wiggle if you want. Okay. Terrific. So when you want to create a chart, you do not have to select all of the data. You just have to have one cell selected within the, the data that you want to chart. So I'm going to insert. And I'm just going to just choose a regular column chart. And there it is. It's really boring. I mean, when you only have that much data, it's probably just as good to give them the numbers, you know. But this is all about just learning how the chart tool works because the chart tool is kind of... Ah, there are a lot of clicks and changes you can make with the chart tool. Um, so... It's a contextual tab, so when your chart's not selected, it's not there. Looking at it doesn't count. You have to click the chart, okay? Uh, it shows where the data's coming from. In this sample, I work with people that use these account codes. They don't, they're just numeric, so if you had just invoice numbers, okay? I'm gonna show you what happens if that first cell had a title, like a code, okay? Or account, whatever. If this is a column with numbers and you go insert a chart I just choose that one okay. this is what it does it's hard to see it has taken that as values to chart because they're numbers okay. you can do all kinds of squirrely things like with you know control and, and not selecting just get rid of the header super easy way insert chart and there you go okay now if you want you can get, go back and type code you know you can retype that and it doesn't interfere at all great uh, yeah it's pretty ugly it's pretty basic okay. but if you click this is where it's different between 2010 2013 2016 okay 20 and I'm gonna be pulling out of memory I'm sorry 2010 I believe you have three sub tabs here you have uh, design format and layout uh, 2013 I think you still had three 2016 they came down to two okay I really liked having the three tabs I could find things easier myself okay. um, where if you just know from format or layout you go to the current selection group this makes sure that you have the right thing chosen so let's say that you wanted to choose this series, okay? That way you know you have them all. Yes, you can click the chart and they're all selected, but if you double click a single cell or a single column, yep, let me close that. If I double click a single column and it won't do it for me now, there we go. The phone is ringing again, remember, because we work in a vacuum and no one ever bothers us, right? So. It's very hard to see, but I have just that one column selected. So if I were to change something now, ah, it should only be changing that one column. It's lying. Um, normally, it only changes the one column. So let me see. Uh, I want to get it because I it happens. Uh, so let's just say, see? Okay, I'm changing the color. And it's like, wait, I wanted to change the color of the whole set. Okay, but it's because I double clicked. And now I'm having a tough time selecting the whole series. So if you know that you can go to the format selection, go away over here, drop it down, and choose what you want from here, you're sure that you have what you want. Okay. Okay. Uh, let me go out of this now. So that's a really basic chart. 
but let's make it fun, okay? Oh, I do want to change this one format, though, because let's change this gap, okay? We're going to make them chubbier, because I like them a little chubby. It's easier to see, okay? If we don't want the lines in the back, we could just click on the lines, and we could delete the lines, okay? If we want it to be cleaner, that's fine. I'm going to copy this because I said I wanted to, to show you in PowerPoint. Okay, control V. Here's our chart in PowerPoint, right? Because it's always easier to make these charts in Excel. It just is. And that's where all your data is, so make the charts over there. But now I have to present, okay? So maybe I do this, I choose float in, and I say, ah, uh, by series. by elements in series. Okay? So you get the idea, right? Do you have to have the Excel version of it? No. It's now an element in PowerPoint. Yep, it's not a link. It's actually embedded in PowerPoint. Great question. Okay. So, you know, it's the same thing where it's based on a click. That was just a preview when it automatically did it. Okay, so if you wanted to talk about things, you have that time to build on the story. Because if you give them the whole chart at once, they're going to be looking at the whole chart and trying to figure out the story for themselves. Which is fine. If your chart is that clear, that's wonderful. Okay? Good. Does that mean I'm out of time? No. Okay. No, I'm still good. I have 15 minutes. We're doing well. Woohoo! Okay. Let's go to thermometer. Okay? Thermometer. Anybody ever do a thermometer? Okay. It's a year over year comparison. That's all it is, okay? So we're going to take that data that was really ugly and boring and add another series of data equally ugly and boring, okay? So um, if I go to design, I'm going to go to select my data, and you will see that, uh oh do I not have my data source here? I know I have it. I know I copied it in here. This is one of the things I copied in. Just one second. I'm going to look for my my hidden cheats thermometer data. Okay, so there's my data. It looks like it lost the connection somewhere along the way. Okay, but I had a hidden sheet there. So I am just going to do this then. I'm going to go to thermometer data and just make that new chart that quickly. Okay. This is how it would be if you were charting this, right? That's what it looks like. You see this all the time. How do you make sense out of this? It's like, uh, well, what are the, uh, can you tell me the trends? No, I, you know, I don't know. Okay. So I'm going to select this first series, okay? And I am going to go to format, this selection, and you've probably never done this. There's a primary and secondary access option. You've done this. Cool. You want to do this part? Oh, okay. Well, I'm so glad that you did it. Okay, so I chose a secondary access. And what that did is it put the two values one on top of the other. One on top of the other. Okay, so I can change sort of the width so you can see it. Okay, I could make it skinnier. A lot skinnier. Now, this is the thing, though. It also put a second measure. See, this says 0 to 1,000, and this says 0 to 800 because that's what those values were. I need to bring them on the same, you know, association. So I'm going to come over here and just delete that access. And now it's 0 to 1,000, and you saw all those values shift, okay? So they're all comparing on the 1,000 scale. So I'm choosing the other one, and I'm just going to make that a little bigger, okay? And so you see one behind the other. Now that gives you a little better idea of, Oh, okay, this was last year, this is this year. Now I can see by account code what's going on. Okay? It tells the story in a different way. And that's all that charts do. They help you tell stories. Visual representations of data. Good? Yes? Still not the most pretty thing, but, you know, you could change it to something else. Oh! Something that people don't do enough of is to save their chart as a template. Where is that now? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. 
it's it's in a different place now than it used to be. I was using trying to do the old things, the older tabs that you'll be using. Somewhere on here, it used to be in this drop down list. Let me just tell you, you can format your chart and then save it as a template. And then the next time you're looking at similar data and you want your chart to look the same, rather than making those 15 clicks to make it just like you like, you bring up your chart and point it to a new data source. Is it a right click? Um, I don't think it's a right click. I can try it. That's, yeah. Um, I know it's here. Add a chart element, quick layout. I know it's still possible but I'm just not sure exactly where. So I'm sorry, I'm watching time. On, on earlier versions, it's easier to find because it's right in this design group. There's a drop down and it says save your chart as a template. Maybe just like in, you, you might be able to do that. Um, save as, well, you can save as a template, but I'm not sure if it's, it's the whole workbook. So I'm not sure it's gonna just save that chart. Yeah, okay. I can look into that. If that is something that you think you'll use, let me know. I'll find the answer for your version. Okay. I think you'll be able to find it on your version because that's where I know where it is. Okay. okay. Um, so let's go to, oh, forecasting is the last thing I just want to show you. Okay, so here's forecasting. Here's if we did this chart again. If I just drag this corner out, okay, you've got that other variable brought into the data set. But the forecast to me now is getting really muddy with this over thing. It doesn't make sense. We can just change this series chart type to a line. Okay. So we can just say that the, that is going to, oops, I didn't mean to get it all. So I just want that one. Change the chart type. Here we go. And I just want to do the 1213. No, not 1213. The newest one to be a line. Oh, so I've got something. I have ugly colors going on here now, but that's okay. You see that? Oh, I still have the. I lost the. Um, I lost the secondary access to. But you don't need that. So we'll just get rid of that one. I just want to show you that you can mix chart types. That's the most important thing. You didn't have to do the year over year on that. Okay. And when I have like a half an hour, I get it right. When I have like 30 seconds, you know, it's not always the perfect click. Good? Okay. Pivot table data. I bet you don't think we can make a pivot table in nine minutes. We are. Because that was that was on the list five times. People are like, I want pivot tables. Can you explain what a pivot table is? I would be happy to. A pivot table summarizes big data. If you have less than 50 lines of data, you probably don't need a pivot table. Okay, so that's that's the big deal. Um, this is actually a sort of clinic area that they were trying to calculate the wait times, time in and time out, how long consultations were taking, what kind of consultations, lots and lots of criteria, lots and lots of data that filtering just wasn't getting the big picture. Okay, so to insert a pivot table, it's on insert, and instead of a table, it's a pivot table. Where do you want to put it? And we'll say, uh, yeah, we'll just put it wherever it wants to. Makes a new sheet for us. Okay. And you decide on your criteria. So I would like to know the wait time. I would like to know the date. Okay. And I would like to know the reason of for the visit. Okay. So now it's still giving me all that. Like that doesn't help me at all. Okay. It's also counting. It's not summing. I want the sum of the time. So the value, I would like to change the value field to sum. Okay. And over here, and this is like a ridiculous amount of, oh, I think I got to click anywhere in there. Ridiculous amount of decimal places. I want to make them smaller. I know I can. I know I can. Mm -hmm. It's because everybody's watching. Okay, come on. Value field settings. Okay. Uh, show values as. And I want number format. I don't know why it's showing as a date. 
shouldn't be showing it. But anyway, show as a number and one decimal point setting. Okay. All right. Ooh. I don't know. I pulled the wrong thing. Oh, I think because it was in seconds, maybe. Anyway. Okay. You get the idea. You can change the numbers. The important thing is that you can group this. So you can group by the month. Okay. We'll look by the month. So you get a summary per month. Okay. Um, this is really a mess. So when you mess something up, you pull it off. There you go. Okay, I made a mistake. No big deal. The great thing is, is that you, you don't have any issues with that. Uh, let's see, where is my calculation? Let me go look at my pivot data. So many sheets, so little time. Uh, appointment calculation. So I was pulling the wrong um, category. Okay, so appointment calculation is what I want. Doop. I'll do that. And I'll change that to some. And we got those weird decimals. I have to look at that. But we'll just make them smaller. I'm going the wrong way. And it gives you an idea of how many minutes people were, you know, at the different points for these different categories. What you can do is switch it this way as well and look at I just want to know about follow-ups we want to reduce the amount of time people are waiting for a follow-up okay for follow-up visits maybe we can bring in nurse practitioners maybe we can have more staff at busy times we can see that March was a huge issue for us okay so in March maybe we need to that's flu season we need to have more people so that's all pivot tables do, is they tell a story. They tell your story, but with big data. And if you wanted to make that, was somebody going to clap for me? Is it time to go? I think it's time to go. Okay. Well, it's all right. I know. You've been here for an hour and a half, and you haven't been moving much except for that stretch I made you do. Okay. All right. But you can filter for different reasons on your chart. Yes. That's okay. I like something easier. So, you know, sometimes you'll have, you have um, say, multiple sheets in a workbook, and you want to change the format. Mm -hmm. Let's say you got you have twenty worksheets. I notice somewhere you can you can make a change on one mm -hmm. worksheet, and then automatically do it. How do you do that? Yep. So um, I'm going to totally blow up my workbook here just for you. Okay. I'm going to start on this sheet one. Okay. So I'm down here on sheet one. I'm going to click the control key and notice I'm grouping all of these sheets. Okay. And what's your name? Cynthia. If I did this right, Cynthia, uh, can that make changes to a table? Okay. Well, let's see. Oh, because I'm in the XML. Bleh, I don't know. Okay, let's try this again. They're all still grouped. Oh, what are you doing? One multiple sheets. So, so, okay. So, the big thing is I have some sheets selected that I have some crazy stuff going on. So, let me just do sheet five. I know that's, oh, well, new sheet. Okay, sorry, folks. I'm just going to do sheet six. Hold down the control T, sheet seven. Those I know are blank. Cynthia, enter. And now if I go to sheet seven, Cynthia, sheet six, Cynthia, they look the same. Okay? Because I had the control key down, and then it'll change the same cell in all of the ones that are connected with the control key. The important thing is uh, disconnecting. I see you shaking your head. Do you forget to do that? So then, then you want them disconnected, and you're like, oh, crud. Okay? So the way to disconnect is you can click on a sheet that isn't in part of the group. Okay? Or you hold down that control key again so that you get... This is why I like to color code my tabs. If you right-click on any of your tab, you can choose tab colors, and then you will always know what tab you're on because it won't be gray. Did that help? 
a little bit. So it's the control key and clicking on, okay, the control key on your keyboard and clicking on the tabs that you want to change at the same time. So if you have the 20, the 20 sheets, okay, you click all 20 sheets with the control key, then on one sheet, you change something and all 20 sheets are changed. Or you can shift on the, the one and then the last one. And then yes. All. Absolutely. That's perfect. Yep. So um, control works nicely if you're doing sheets that aren't contiguous next to each other. But if they are contiguous, then shift will get them all in between. Absolutely. Thank and you. Then, so so you, you select those worksheets first and then you go to the one spreadsheet that you did not click. Or no, that has to be in the group. Any okay. any spreadsheet in so the group. You go to any spreadsheet and make the changes, and it'll make it on all of this. Okay. Yep. All right. Okay. Get more okay. about the layout of the pages and add any footers. Yes. Uh, yep. And I encourage you to use headers and footers um, because then your data starts at row one, which just is better practice for mail merging and all kinds of great stuff. So thank you so much for your time. It's been a pleasure meeting you.